Welcome. This video is about whether today's temperatures are warmer or cooler than during the medieval warm period. It is actually more about another scientist being caught cooking the books. Here is Art Horn explaining why he thinks the medieval warm period is warmer than today. Because the earth started to warm up. In fact, when people talk about warming of the earth, it's been occurring for 300 years. Uh, the temperature bottomed out around 1700 and has been unevenly rising ever since then. Now, eventually thermometers came along. So the measurement of temperature with thermometers roughly starts around 1850. And this is the trend. It's increased, the temperature, average temperature of the Earth, according to our thermometers, has increased about 1.1 degree Fahrenheit in the last 160 years. But there are warming and cooling periods lasting 25 to 30 years. Warming, cooling, warming, cooling, and warming. One of those warming periods was from 1978 to 1998. That ended in 1998. And the only thing I can think that ended in 1998 was that interminable film Titanic. Art obviously has missed the video I made showing definitively that global warming did not end in 1998 or 1995 or 2002. Links to that video and many of my other videos are listed in the description box below. After that short commercial interruption we shall now resume our scheduled program. What you may have never heard before is that there has been no warming of the earth since 1998. Uh, this is not circulated in the media. They either don't know it or don't want to say it. They probably just don't know it. Art apparently doesn't know how to use Google, because when I googled no warming since 1998, I only got 17.1 million hits, and many of those were from major news services like those pictured in the background here. Uh, the global warming advocates say that the last decade has seen record high temperatures, but that's only in a very brief period of time in the modern era of, th of thermometers. Back in the medieval warm period, it was as warm or warmer than today, and back in part of the Roman Empire. In the Roman warm period, it was as warm or warmer than today. Let's take a closer look at that graph. There are three things to notice about it. First of all, it's not of global temperatures. It is just of the Northern Hemisphere. In fact, not even all of the Northern Hemisphere. It's from about 30 degrees north to the pole. 30 degrees north corresponds to approximately the Gulf Coast. The second thing is where it ends. It ends in the year 2000, so that omits the warmest decade on record. Would that change our result? We shall see later. I was most interested in the statement that this was adapted from a paper by Frederick Lundquist that was published in 2010. What does adapted mean? Again, we will look into that in a, in a little while. But first, let's see if his assertion that the current temperatures as according to the graph, are lower than the medieval warm period. To do that, we simply have to draw a line across the width of the graph at the level of the current temperatures and see if there are any points lying above it. And we can see that in both the Roman warm period and the medieval warm period, there are several points that do lie above that curve. So he seems to be right. Now let's see if we can find out what the word adapted means. The only way to really find out how the graph was adapted is to go back to the original graph and see how they are different. So I found the Lundquist paper and looked through it to find the figure that they were talking about. The figure is figure 3. Here it is. You can see what the adaption is immediately. Art is showing a graph where the dashed lines at the right have been removed. Those are the modern temperature record. So why would you remove your most recent and accurate data? Obviously because it doesn't tell the story that you want to tell. If I now transfer those points to the original graph and draw the same line as I drew before, you will see that now no points from the medieval warm period or the Roman warm period lie above the red curve. That says that the modern temperatures are indeed higher than during the medieval warm period or the Roman warm period. But we haven't finished yet. What about the 2000 to 2009 decade? That wasn't included in the data. To get an idea of that, we go to the NOAA plots that show the decadal average global temperatures and see that the 2000 to 2009 decade is about 0.2 degrees warmer than the previous decade. Let's add that to the curve and see what we end up with. If we add in that extra 0.2 degrees centigrade, we find that modern temperatures are nearly 0.4 degrees centigrade warmer than the medieval warm period. Given the uncertainties in the measurements here shown by the grey shading, that is a very, very significant difference. 
However, Horne concludes from the original graph that the medieval warm period is in fact warmer than today. All he needed to have done was to have read Lundquist's abstract. It says quite plainly in there that the last two decades are probably the warmest in the last 2,000 years. Even if this graph was not born to work, you have to be grossly negligent to have not read the paper that contained the graph that you're using to make your point. As soon as he saw Lundquist came to the opposite conclusion, he should have done a bit more checking, but apparently he didn't. So we can only conclude that either Horne is a very poor scientist, or he was deliberately trying to deceive his audience. I'll leave the choice of which to believe up to you. So what have we learned? First, the graph that Horne showed is not of global temperatures, just a part of the Northern Hemisphere. The graph has been adapted, which means that key data was omitted and the conclusions reached were wrong. Uh, and I think we can safely conclude the temperatures are now higher than they were during the medieval warm period. That's it for this time. Keep safe. Bye for now.